Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High, the Lord Most High, the Lord Most High. Glory be to the name of the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, who is like unto our God, how great he is, how great is our Lord, our God, our Savior, and our King. How great you are, O Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. Abba Father, you reign. You reign supreme. You reign sovereign. You reign in all the heavens and all the earth. You reign, O Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is like unto our God? How great he is, how great he is. He is God all by himself. And beside him there is no other God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is our God. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and worship him, for he is worthy to be praised and worthy to be adored. He is God all by himself. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're unchangeable, unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. We could also say unmovable, indefeatable, indestructible. That's who he is. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, he is God all by himself. And no matter what men do, no matter what men try to create, hallelujah, hallelujah, God is still God, hallelujah, all by himself. And beside him, there is no other God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, who is like unto our God. Yes, Jesus. Glory to God Most High. Glory to the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord strong in battle, the Lord powerful and glorious, the Lord who is and always is and will be. Hallelujah. And is to come. God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Our God is a good God. Yes, he is. Our God is a good God. Yes, he is. He picks us up. He turns us around. He plants our feet on higher ground. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. This is a good day. A day that he has made for us to rejoice and be glad in. A day when we give him thanks. Hallelujah. And so I say good morning, Holy Spirit of God. And welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome in every way, Holy Spirit of God. You are you are needed, Holy Spirit. You are needed. Needed to di di dis display God's power in the earth in this time and in this season you are needed to bring direction and correction and even resurrection you are needed hallelujah to destroy some things that are working against us and to build up strength and power and direction and confidence in some of us so that we might pursue overtake and recover all for lord many have been weakened by the issues of life many have been weakened by the ways that we encounter each day 
by the, 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 the lack of faith and by just the issues of life, our souls have become downcast. But this morning I say to you, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are our deliverer. You are our present help in times of trouble. You are the one we look to and you promise that we will be radiant and our faces never covered with shame. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that your promises are yea and amen. They will never fall to the ground. Your word that you have given to us, Rhema or Logos, will never return unto you void, but must accomplish that which it was sent to accomplish for us, in us, and through us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you this morning with great expectations and anticipations. We welcome you this morning with great power with great anointing, with great faith, and with great expectations of what you will do and how you will manifest for us today in this fourth watch hour as the Lord Jesus Christ appeared on the water for the disciples to see and to walk in the fullness of the presence of the one who walks on water. So this morning, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of the living God, you who dwells in us, you who were given to us, for greatness to be manifested through us. You who were given to us that we might grow in faith, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You who Holy Spirit was given to us that the mind of Christ might manifest through us as the spirit of wisdom and understanding, as the spirit of counsel and might, as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You Holy Spirit that was given to us that we might have power, love and self-control. You Holy Spirit that was given to us as a gift from heaven that that we might tread upon serpents and scorpions, that we might stand in power over all the works of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. You, Holy Spirit, who makes us efficient and proficient in excellence, hallelujah, walking in wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord, with the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit as our calling card. Holy Spirit, we have great expectations of your performance in us, through us, and for us. And so we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere. For your glory, O Lord, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Overcome us even now, Holy Spirit. Overcome us by power. Overcome us by wisdom. Overcome us by anointing. Overcome us by knowledge. Overcome us by love. Overcome us by peace. Overcome us with joy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Here we are. Here we are. We could be sleeping still. We could be doing all kinds of things that Satan would be happy with and you would be sad with. But here we are seeking and hoping in our frailties, in our faults, in our misgivings, in our weakness. We are here saying, Lord, make us strong. Make us strong. Carry us through this pathway. Pull us up, those who need pulling up, like you pulled up Peter. Visit us like you did Thomas, those who are doubting. Stand with us like you did Peter when he spoke out of turn by the influence of the enemy. Forgive us, O oh God, like you forgive Peter when he denied you. Whatever it is that we need as a family, O oh God Almighty, we cry out to you this morning and we say, Lord, give it unto us that we might flourish, that we might end up like Stephen and Philip and Peter and James and John and Paul, that we might end up not necessarily to die the way they died, but to live the way they lived. To be as confident, as steadfast, as immovable as they did. Lord, may we live in the fullness of your goodness. That when our lives would have ended, if you do not come before that time, that we would have fought the good fight and run the good race. For those who do not seek to embrace the ending of a journey is not on the journey. Those who do not seek to embrace the ending of a journey is not on the journey. And so, Lord, may we be confident in embracing the end of a thing, knowing fully well that without a vision of the end of a thing, the journey would be confused, the journey would be disoriented, the journey 
will not be a value to us for it is the end it is the end goal it is the victory possibility that keeps us going when things get difficult in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth father strengthen us for the journey strengthen us O god by giving us a vision of the victory a vision of the end a vision of you as friend of you welcoming us into your presence for eternity give us vision lest we perish in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth deliver us from everything that easily besets us O god deliver us from doubt from fear from every influence and contamination of the enemy's voice and the enemy's works deliver us O gracious wonderful god that we might truly be anointed sons that you can tr trust in the mighty and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you and welcome. I apologize for the late start. I'm telling you, man, sometimes, you know, when, when you get to my age, you need extraordinary prayers just to to be able to um to wake up efficiently and effectively and you still have uh full days of activities and and, and and go through the night and then still wake up um and some days it's harder than others but we are still up and we still give god thanks amen we still thank god for the opportunity to be a part of what he's doing in this season as we draw closer and closer to the end of 2023 i must tell you that I'm not as 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 what what is the word that I want to use that is not um, I don't want it to be a negative uh, I'm still not as accomplished as I would I would have thought I would be as I thought I I needed to be as I as I desired to be for 2023 I expected more but I'm glad for what I got I'm glad for what what God has done I'm glad I'm really happy for the growth that I've seen in my own life. I don't know about you, but you have to assess. Each and every one of us have to assess, especially those that have been faithful uh, in this Fort Watch family, to be getting up every single day, even when I was not uh, available, even when I went on break or rest or whatever, when circumstances prevented us from coming together, you still was faithful. To stand with God and to have your time with him in his presence uh, I, I want each of us to, to just reflect in our minds where we were at January 1 2023 where we were as a person where we were as an individual where we were in character and nature and to see hallelujah yes hallelujah and to see what we have accomplished thus far how much we have grown an accomplishment people of god in the in the eyes of god is not in whether or not we got a new car a new house whether uh, a prophetic word came to pass or not as the case might be because we have until december 31st 1201 a.m to see the manifestation of any of god's or 12 12 midnight right to see the manifestation of God's promises um, for 2023 we have we still have time but I'm saying to you can we look so we're not looking to say my God these things have not yet been done because they can still be done in this latter year that latter part of the year what I'm looking at is can we look back and see how we have improved how we have been transformed my one of my best friends in the world Marlon Young hallelujah he, he, he's he's so positive he's on here this morning and he says the year not done yet and i agree man of god but can we look back i know when i look back i see how far you have come how much work god has done on your temperament on your 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 dealing with people your how much you have grown in love grown in sacrifice and there weren't too many people that would love more than you and sacrifice more than you but sometimes god will allow us to grow and i'm saying this about marlon but i'm saying this for each and every one of us to understand hallelujah good morning sister denise happy to have you glory be to god i'm i'm i'm, I'm challenging 
us this morning, people of God. I'm challenging us to be encouraged by, uh, by a reflection of our own lives to see how we have grown. I have heard the testimonies of persons who have said, Sister Sean Chana have said, Hallelujah, um, Pastor. Uh, some people can have the opportunity to say it publicly and some people have the opportunity to say it privately but more than anything else we must say it to God I personally have seen great growth 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 in my prayer life growth in my my, my um, ability to exegete the word and to to give uh, a, a revelation of the word to stay on, on, on point and focused I've seen growth in how I analyze things and what I say and how much wiser I've become and how much more impacting God has allowed me to become and it's all God because I didn't go anywhere to study I didn't go to conferences I didn't go on YouTube and, and, and learn from those who are um, proficient in that in that in that area I had to, to, to just sit at the feet of the Lord even when I wasn't at his so-called feet when I wasn't in my private space when I wasn't thinking about God I was still at his feet learning and growing when I was watching a movie I was learning and growing so that I could become more efficient more mature and more effective in ministering to the to, to the people of God and so that's what I want each of us to do to just take a few seconds and to just meditate on what God has done outside of keeping you alive outside of, 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 of preserving you in the health and strength can you see how much God has impacted your character and nature can you see how much God has caused you to be better at things that you were not even focusing on sister Sean called me and she said pastor since I've been in the fourth watch even this year 2023 I find that the Lord has touched my soul in a way that has caused me to be ministering the gospel with greater clarity with greater precision with greater results because now there is there's an a, an environment and atmosphere that helps me to focus that helps me to, 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 to prophesy over my own life that helps me to speak positive that helps me to be hallelujah of value to other persons and so even if it is just that uh, each day you now go out of your way when you didn't before when you never used to in 2022 you go out of your way in this year to be a blessing to someone to find a way to give a gift to someone to find a way to encourage someone to just deliberately and consistently go about doing good that's a significant improvement over what you once were hallelujah hallelujah doing ah uh, brother marlon said doing good way up that's it doing good must be way up and every year there must be a significant marker that we meet and surpass if if possible on what god has and desires for us in this life and so christianity today can i just say this and i don't mean it in a negative way Christianity today is, is, is filled with people who just want, 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 want. I want a prophetic word. I want a breakthrough. I want a spouse. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want um, anointing. I want power. I want knowledge of the word. I want uh, a, a good prayer life. I want, I want, I want. We, we could just go on and on and on about what modern day believers want either from God or from man through God amen but today I'm saying to you people of God when you look back on your life when you look back on this year 2023 mm -hmm. what should be the most exciting thing for you is how much you have given can I say that again slowly when we look back on 2023 our success for this year thus far should not be pinned to how our business grew, to how we got married, to how our marriage changed. Come on. But we should look back to see how much we gave. Did my marriage change because I, I, I took a position not to be looking for my wife to give me all the time everything, but for me to give her? Did my marriage change because of my giving? Or did my, what, my marriage change because of my wife's giving? If my marriage changed because of my wife's giving, then my wife would have benefited from the growth by the Spirit of God. 
but I would not have. I would have benefited from God's giving through her, but I personally would not have benefited from growth in God, by God. And so I want to just release the Spirit of God in this new, new revelation on each and every one of us that we can look back and say, okay, so nine months have gone and we're in the 10th month. There's 10, 11, 12. There are three months to go, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To, to, to perfect our body, soul, and spirit, mind, will, and emotion. There are three months left for that which will affect our body, soul, and spirit, our mind, will, and emotion to move to another level. God can still do in these three months what has not been done in nine. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you feeling fine? I'm saying to you by the Spirit of the living God, our God Almighty, our great and sovereign Lord, our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our conquering lion in the tribe and the tribe of from the tribe of Judah, he is able to do in three months, uh, as he did in three years. Uh, in a hey, Jesus, what Jesus did in three years, uh, persons spent thirty trying to do as much and couldn't and have not. And so, in the number three lies God's miracles. In the number three lies God's perfection. In the number three lies God's power and God's grace and God's glory. Come on somebody and I'm sent here with three months to go God can supernaturally impose upon us great anointing, great power great giftings, great abilities come on, God can show himself strong and mighty as he did in three years hallelujah of ministry so can he do in three months before this year is out and so all we have to do is look back and say how i have grown god i used to curse when certain things happen i used to be miserable cross complaining i used to be unfaithful i used to not focus i used to not trust you as much but now god by your hand i can see i look back now even as i focus and i say wow i have seen growth that i didn't pay any attention to i used to be miserable i used to be easily angered i used to be easily frustrated i used to easily give up but god says can you look back and see how you have grown some of you have social media platforms that you work on can you see how you have grown in how you talk to people how you deal with when people send negativities towards you can you see how you have grown can you see how things used to just uh, fall through your hands slip through the cracks money used to not stay in your hands but now you are able to budget and plan and strategize can you see the goodness of God that has taken place in your life that was not as obvious because sometimes we think people of God that the obvious blessings of God must be a house or a car something that other people can see but I'm here to tell you that you'll be blessed more by God by the things that th people can't see than by the things that people will see because God's intent if you didn't know let me tell you what seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness means it means that when we seek God his kingdom comes in us his righteousness flows through us and by the kingdom of God being rooted and grounded in us and his righteousness flowing through us then all things are added as a result because remember God will not drop a house from the sky on the hill and say that's yours God will not ring the doorbell and when you go outside there's a big proud or or or, 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 or a Mercedes or whatever with a big bow around it understand how God works God works through other human beings. And so if all things are to be added unto you, it must come as a result of the work that you have done for God. Come on. And then those things become a pay. Those things become God's favor upon you because of obedience, because of blessing, because of walking according to his will and purpose. That's what Matthew 6.33 actually means in a nutshell. It is not the full exegesis of Matthew 6 33 but I'm just saying as a principle if we get it if we get it guys and begin to seek only to give to others as God gives to us to pour out to others as God pours into us to pursue God for who he is and not what he's able to give come on 
The Bible says that the children of Israel knew the acts of God, but Moses knew his ways. And Moses got to spend days uh, in his face. Moses got to be the, 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 just the epitome of who God is. And so anything that you want in this life, tell people that you learned it in the presence of God in the fourth watch hour. That all you have to do is pursue him. Last night I had a really nice conversation that, that, that wasn't supposed to be a nice conversation with someone I love dearly. And it was about, you know, what happens in these times when you feel broken, when you feel despondent, when you feel hurt, when you feel like nothing is happening for you. It just constantly one negative after another, one negative after another. What happens when you keep losing your job? What happens when you keep uh, not being able to pay your bills on time? What happens when the money that you're getting is not enough? What happens when the, 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 you, you need a relationship, someone to lean on, someone to comfort you, someone to, 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 to just hug you when the day is long and difficult? What happens when you don't have that? What happens when it seem like Satan is just constantly in your ears saying, if you were with me you would be better off if you were with me or even reminding you of when you were with him that's like an ex-boyfriend that was rich calling the girl the, the girl she's married now and, and and while things are going well spiritually things are not going so well naturally and he keeps calling and saying hey how you doing um i noticed that you're taking the bus when you were with me you used to drive you had your access to any car that you wanted but now you're taking the bus maybe you should come back to me that's that's the kind of come on if you can follow the example is the kind of way that satan wants to pitch us against god he's saying yes i see you walking now i see you taking the bus now i see you, you you you're not benefiting the way that they used to benefit when you were with me why don't you consider coming back is somebody hearing me this morning because i feel the presence of the living god uh, god wants to encourage some souls this morning but god is saying to you what satan gives you is sure live like an ex-boyfriend who is an abuser he has yes multi millions in the bank he has many cars that they can choose from but while you can drive to where you want to go to you're driving in tears you're driving in pain you're driving in shame he embarrasses you as he feels like because he's the one that is paying your bills but when God pays your bills he never never embarrasses you but you have to learn how to be committed to him we have to learn commitment and faithfulness commitment and faithfulness does not come natural to us as human beings it doesn't no matter what you say out of your mouth commitment and faithfulness does not come natural to us we have to learn it and sometimes we have to learn it through death not death as in die and go into a hole but dying to self dying to our needs dying to our desires because the, 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 the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil things the love of money the love of things the love of comfort the love of always being in peace the love of always being in joy the love of always being happy the love of always being able to buy what we want and go where we want and do what we want all of those things are the love of money and the love of money God says is the root of all evil so if there is a thing that will make us happy and we pursue it at all cost if we pursue it at all cost we will fall into problems and so God to those who he cares about those who he love those who he chastens part of our chastening is that the things that we're pursuing the most and that includes things that he wants us to have Oh, Jesus, this is where it gets a little murky. Even things that he wants us to have. The Lord says that if we owe bills, they, they, we are to pay them. But we're saying, God, but I, you say that I have to pay my light and my water and my rent and my car payment and all these things. You said that I am to pay them. It is your order that is supposed to, I'm, I'm trying to follow. But I'm not able to because my job is not paying me enough. My business is not producing enough. Nothing is happening that will facilitate my obedience to that word. And God at that point is saying, when my word cannot come to pass through you, 
it is time for you to just relax like a piece of stick on a water like a piece of stick on the water flowing down the river relax and allow me to take you to where I need to take you to because God is looking for 100% trust in him 100% confidence that if I perish I perish but I will continue to trust God I will not believe in my own strength I will not believe in my ability to borrow from others I will believe that if this thing is for me my God will provide it for me and so God is looking for some people who will trust him even when it doesn't look like he's supposed to be trusted God is looking for some people who will believe him even when it's hard to believe him God is looking for some people who will die to the, 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 the idea of embarrassment the idea of shame because what we call shame is not what God calls shame in a lot of instances it's not what God calls shame amen and so it's important for us as we go down this journey especially in these last days that we say God I will not become anxious because my light bill is due tomorrow my mortgage is due tomorrow and I haven't seen it yet God this kind of money doesn't just come out of nowhere there has to be a process and a plan I don't know who I can borrow it from I don't know where to go I don't know what to do they're gonna take my house and God is not looking for persons who will always only only see the negative outcomes he's looking for those who can believe him for the miracle come on even when it looks like it cannot happen that's why it's called a miracle God is looking for some people who will believe to the end listen carefully people of God may I give you an expectation that most of us have maybe not even experienced yet when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego was being led to the fire when the others the people who were carrying them the soldiers who were taking them to throw them in the fire when those soldiers perished by the very heat of the fire Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego still did not even maybe didn't even realize that they had a shield around them if they had focused on the fact that God this is fire it's gonna consume us if they had focused on that they would not have been able to appreciate that other men with flesh and blood like them have perished yet they were preserved other people other situations have caused lesser men to perish but you have been preserved and so if you're still in a position where you're crying if you're still in a position where you feel like you're dying it means that others have died but God has preserved you it means that others have perished but God has preserved you come on and so when we look back we have seen where God has brought us through many different many different difficulties many different situations for the last 12 nine months we have had difficulties being consistent in paying our bills we have had difficulties in consistency in, in 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 maintaining a lifestyle of righteousness holiness and truth but God still has preserved us like he did Daniel like he did Shadrach Meshach and Abednego lesser people have fallen away and have gone back to the, their own vomit like dogs but God has preserved you and I there are many times when I felt like I wanted to just run away I wanted to give it up I said God I can't manage this church thing I can't manage people sheep too hard to manage and to lead I this is this is not for me but I look back and I see where every time that I believe God that he's the one that's doing it he's the one that will make it work when I look back and I see when when other people would say why don't you do this to this person why don't you say this to this person why don't you make this decision why don't you why don't you why don't you and all I could do was just respectfully uh, either just do not even take on what was being suggested or to find ask God how do I do what they are saying to do according to you and every single time to this day it has worked out because it is done God's way hallelujah we must only do things God's way and God's way 
is the only sustainable way. And so no matter what you're going through, people of God, no matter what you are in, no matter how deep the water, no matter how hot the fire, no matter how many lions are in the cave, no matter what you don't have or what you, you are being tempted to, to get, I'm here to tell you today that the only thing that is sustainable is trust in God. The only thing that will sustain you as you go forward for the rest of this year is complete trust in God. I'm talking to myself, but if you're overhearing me and grab on to this as well, you will be so much better off. I plan to be better off. I plan for my better months to be these last three months of this year. I plan for the favor of God to be seen uncommonly, on this indisputably on my life these last three months but I got to learn I got to accept I got to receive what I am saying for myself now by my spirit and the spirit of a living God I got to receive that all I have to do is do what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to do is trust God in everything and every situation in everything and every situation can I, can I just give you a quick testimony of how God sometimes proves our loyalty even in discomfort? For, since Monday, for some strange reason, I don't know if it's a, a change in medication or something that, um, that my doctor gave me, but since Monday, almost every day through the night and into the mornings, I have this most excruciating headache. When I say headache, guys, I cannot explain to you. It's like someone takes a hammer, a real iron hammer, and is hitting me in the back of my head, my neck up the two sides in the veins, come up behind my ears and into my entire head. The pain is excruciating. I have a high pain tolerance, but the pain was so terrible. I, I, I sometimes can't even open my eyes. I don't want to speak. I don't want to hear any voices in my head through the phone because of the level of excruciating pain I'm feeling in my head. And do you know that every morning except this morning, every morning except this morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, I did fourth watch in pain in pain a headache that was unbelievable unbelievable and you know the only reason i was able to it not because of my pain threshold because i believe god i believe god and 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 and, and the, <laughs> the funny thing that satan keeps reminding me satan says yes you were able to do fourth watch for an hour and a half sometimes even a little bit more an hour and 40 minutes and and yet still when you come off fourth watch you can't even talk you had to go sleep you had to go lay down you had to get your neck rubbed by your wife you you you, you were in that state and he tries to tell you that when he's in control of your life when he was running things you didn't have to go through these things he tries to lure you back like an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend who find out that you are now better off even in your bad days than when you were with them oh is somebody hearing me this morning and so i'm saying to you as we learn to trust god we get delivered as we learn to trust god we get sanctified as we learn to get trust God we get glorified and so the Lord is saying even as you are going through the storm just remember that my rod and staff will comfort you hallelujah 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 so we must press despite because if we if we move away from God if we move away from God and go to the things of Satan, go back to our ex-boyfriend, there's a reason why, why Satan is our ex-boyfriend. In the same way, ladies, and even gentlemen, in the same way, ladies, that the person that is now your ex is ex for a reason. Satan is our ex-lover for a reason. Is our ex-husband for a reason. Come on, somebody. Gentlemen, Satan, just like her ex-girlfriend, she's ex for a reason. If she didn't have some issues that you couldn't live with, that you couldn't maintain contact with, intimacy with for the rest of your life, and she's now ex, she's ex for a reason. He's ex for a reason. And Satan is ex for a reason. Because he, hallelujah, cannot take us where we need to go. He cannot help us to fulfill purpose. 
he can bring some 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 things that, that that looks good for a time and for a season but the purpose that we want to accomplish can only be accomplished by the spirit of god and in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and so no matter what we're going through whether we're with satan or with god we're gonna go through some difficulties whether we're with satan or with god we're gonna go through some storms but satan is not gonna give you a rod and staff to comfort you through the valley of the shadow of death he's gonna say make it out on the other side and if you do I have some gifts for you but God says don't worry about it I won't let you die in the valley of the shadow of death I will provide a way of escape I will provide a rod and staff for you ah and when you come out you don't have to guess about what's waiting for you I will prepare a table for you with a 10 course meal everything that you could ever like everything that you could ever want everything that you could ever need I'm gonna provide overflow that you can be a blessing to others and I will provide Provide it in the face of your enemies. I will anoint your head with oil that when the enemy comes, because he's a liar, he's a liar, and he, it, 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 the flies that want to come into your ears, the oil of the Lord not only anoints you as a king, anoints you as a priest, anoints you as a prophet or a prophetess, anoints you as one great in God. It also keeps the flies away. Come on, if you know the history of why the shepherds would anoint the head of the the sheep with oil hallelujah I feel the presence of God my whole body is tingling because God is speaking to some people this morning there's some of us who Satan like flies have been in our ears trying to convince us like an ex-boyfriend it's better to come back to me yes I beat you once in a while but at least you have a nice BMW to drive Yes, I cheat on you once in a while, but at least you live in a lavish six-bedroom house where you don't have to face the heat of the day because AC is running all the time. Uh, he tries to lure you back into a life that is not fulfilling by some things. But God says to tell you this morning, do not focus on things because that's the love of money. Love of money is the root of every evil. And so because he has money, because she has power and influence and money, they lure you with that and you go because of the love of the money and not remember that they are ex for a reason. You got vexed for a reason. You blocked them from text for a reason. Amen. And so to go back would be committing treason. And so we're not going back. Never going back to the way it was. I'm not going back. I'm never going back to the way it used to be. Hallelujah. And so we're pressing forward with God because a day of difficulty with God is better than a year of blessing or a year of favor with Satan. A day of difficulty with God is better than a year of outpouring with Satan. Let us press, guys. Let us press through. It's easy to give up. It's easy to say, ah, God will forgive me. But I'm saying to you, Every time that we, 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 we go back to our ex, every time that we fall into the trap of masturbation, of pornography, of lying, of stealing, of getting angry, of saying evil things, mean things about or to other persons, even one time, every time that we do that, what we have done is accepted an invitation from our ex, Lucifer, to have dinner with him, to have an encounter with him, to have an intimate moment with him. I hope somebody is hearing me this morning. Every time that we allow ourselves to fall into a trap, it is a moment of intimacy with Lucifer. So whenever you get angry, whenever you lose control, whenever you expose and live from your soul and not from your spirit, what you're doing is having an intimate moment with Satan. The good thing about God is that he is like, oh God, I'm, I feel my chest getting, getting weak. Sometimes when I have these conversations with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I just can't help myself because I see how good God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
every time that we cheat on God by getting angry, by saying something mean, by not doing something for someone that we know we should or that we know we can, every time that we have an intimate moment with God, we cheat on him, we commit adultery with Satan by the things we say and the things we do or the things we don't say or don't do. Every time that we have that encounter with Satan, hallelujah, hallelujah, it is a moment when God gets to be like Hosea. We get to be like the prostitute Hosea married and God gets to be like Hosea. And he always keeps coming back for us. He keeps coming back for us. But does that mean because he keeps coming back for us, we should keep cheating? We should keep committing adultery? God forbid. So let us persevere in this season. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For indeed, indeed, I promise you, on my life and my commitment and covenant to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I guarantee you that you will gain great gains. You will have great rewards if you faint not. And to faint there don't, doesn't just mean to fall out and be unconscious. To faint means to fail. To faint means to cheat. To faint means to go back to your own vomit. To faint means to cast your pearls before swine. To faint means to say, I have to preserve what I have because I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I have to save all of my money. I'm not paying tithe or offering. I'm not giving to the poor. I'm not doing anything at all because I have to make sure I secure my future. Your future is not secured by what you do towards it. You're secure. Your future is secured by what you do for God. Let me say it again. Your future is not secured by what you do for yourself. Your future is secured by what you do for God. Amen? And so, I want us to just be encouraged this morning. No matter what you're going through, there's so many of us that are going through pain and hurt right now. But I'm saying to you, keep doing for God. Keep reading the word. Keep praying. Keep praising. Keep Keep, keep being joyous or happy or being a blessing even when there's pain. Keep pushing through. And I, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily comfortable using myself as an example um, because uh, even the Pharisees tried to blame Jesus saying that he, he spoke well of himself. Hallelujah. But I'm saying to you, in the same way that I could push through pain to do what God desires of me, to have the devotion, you can push through pain too. It is easy because it is not of our flesh. It is not of our will. It is of God's strength. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And so we can do all things through him who gives us strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Push past the pain. Push past the things that would seek to block us. Push past that sweet phone call that says, Hey, baby, I want to take you to dinner. I hear that you're having some, some, some tough times. Hey, honey, I hear you're having some difficulties. You've been good to me throughout the years. Can we have lunch? I, 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 I want to be a blessing to you. Your ex does not give you anything, anything without wanting something back. Your ex-lover, Lucifer, will never give you anything without wanting something back. And so when he starts talking to you and starts telling you, come, come be with me. Come do what I want you to do instead of what God wants because he's not blessing you. He's not doing anything for you. Don't you see? Don't you see? You're always crying and you're wondering what happened. Why am I not healed? Why is my family being broken up? Why is my fiance, why is my spouse, why is, is, is my boyfriend going away, my girlfriend leaving me? Why are these things happening to me? 
and the list could go on and on and on and he's saying see when you were with me you were in a 10 year relationship a 20 year relationship when you were with me you had good everything that you needed and now you leave me and gone to this Jesus and now look at that turmoil storms all kinds of difficulties you're crying more now than you cried with me but I'm here to tell you that there is a time in the valley of the shadow of death when you will cry when you will be uncomfortable there's a time in the storm when you'll be when you'll say Jesus don't you care that we perish there's a time in the storm when you're rowing and rowing but you're not going and going nothing is showing there's a time in your and a season when it looks like there are no fruit on the tree there's a time in the season when it looks like there is no harvest but I'm here to tell you that when God begins to pour out the harvest you'll know then that the devil was a liar you'll know then that God will take you higher you'll know then that God in the midst of all of these things were protecting you with his fire come on people of God hallelujah and so all God wants is for us to believe that he's a good God that's it you know God just wants us to believe that he's a good God because he says in his word if we being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will he give good gifts to us how much more will he give us the spirit of God because we need him how much more will he give us blessings untold because we need it I have a son and a daughter and no matter what anything that my son and daughter needs I'm not even going to my wife yet because that's automatic anything I have is hers anyway so I don't have to talk but my children have to get it from me so that's why I'm not using her so those those pastor Marsha lovers just leave that be amen <laughs> praise God but 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 seriously though if my son or my daughter needs something and I have it or even if I don't have it I'm gonna find a way to get it to give it to them and I am mortal I am flawed I am weak I am sometimes and most times no good if not for the Spirit of God, if not for the Word of God, if not for the will of God, I would fall away and become a son of perdition. Are you hearing me, people of God? Yet still, in all of that corruption and muck and nastiness that is in me called flesh, I would still move ends heaven and earth to do what is required to be a blessing to my daughter and my son. How much more God who is perfect. Woo! Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Come on. Mentee and strength, strength, strength in the name of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me Jesus hallelujah guys it's not always gonna be peaches and cream it's not always gonna be rosy it's not always gonna be how we think it should be but I'm telling you it's gonna be how God wants it to be if we trust him it will work out much better uh, Nakia I'm telling you your life will work out better if you just faithfully trust Jesus uh, Angela Gray I'm telling you this morning uh, come on somebody if we trust Jesus come on Jamel hallelujah you thought you were trusting God before but when the fire comes, when the lions come, when the valley of the shadow of death comes, when the hurricane comes with winds and waves, that you have nothing to prevent these things from destroying your life. When they come, if you trust Jesus, he will speak a peace be still. He will calm the fire and make it like air condition. He will take out the, the, the venom out of the snake and he will shut the lion's mouth I'm telling you that right at a moment in time when you feel like this is it I am just about dead I am a hey, I close my eyes and I await death that's when God brings life that's when our God brings life but we first must close our eyes and embrace the possibility of death the word of God says those who seek to preserve their life will lose it but those who give it up for God to take will gain it amen 
And so I don't know who God wants to encourage this morning in a deep and powerful way. But I pray that you will be encouraged by what God has said to you this morning. God says to tell you, be encouraged by just staying in his presence. Staying in his presence. Staying in his presence. Don't look to the right or to the left. Don't be like the disciples who they were in Jesus' presence in the boat. But yet they were panicking. They were fearful. They were worried about losing the life in the flesh. Instead of recognizing that they had life and life more abundantly right there with them be encouraged this morning be willing to die like Daniel be willing that when you throw into the pit you say God if you allow these lions to eat me then I will be with you in paradise because to live is Christ but to die is gain amen now is this tough pastor this message tough this morning I don't oh boy pastor I'm not sure this message is tough we are in the last days God is predominantly going to be bringing tough messages. The days of prosperity messages are long gone and over. Let me tell you, does that mean you won't prosper? Of course you'll prosper. Every battle that you, that you are able to survive, every battle that you're able to survive is a prosperity. Every battle that you are able to survive is a prosperity. So I like to, one of the things that God allows me to do is when I'm counseling people and they're saying, Lord, I feel like give up. I don't feel like God loves me. I don't feel like I can make it. I don't feel like I can get ahead. I don't feel like that, that, that I'm accomplishing anything. I say to them, how long have you been feeling that way? That's the first question. How long have you been feeling that way? Some will say from last week or last month and some will say for years now. And I'm saying to them, my next argument, my next statement to them is, okay, so now you see how good God is. And they're like, what? What do you mean? I'm in difficulty. I'm in tears. I'm crying before you because it seemed like Satan is dominating my life. And you're saying, now I see how good God is? Yes, because you're still alive. You've gotten through all the things and all the days when you thought you would never make it. It wasn't because of anything you did because then you would still be doing it and you wouldn't be before me complaining. You wouldn't be on the phone to me talking. So it's not because of anything that you have done. It is just God teaching you how to persevere through storms. Storms will always be there in this life. And so we as good Christians have to learn how to navigate in the storm. It's like surfing. If you try to go against the wave when you're surfing, you're going to wipe out. If you try to, to ride a boat um, through a wave, you're going to get wiped out. But if you go with the wave, and God is trying to teach us to go with the wind, trying to teach us how to go with the waves, trying to teach us how to rock and roll, rock and roll. Don't fight against what's fighting against you. Fight with what's fighting for um, against you because God will fight for them that fight against you. Fight with, with against them that fight against you. You don't have to fight. You just need to flow. Come on. So God says, take the F word of flow and I will take the F word of fight. I will fight for you. All you do is flow. Just go with the flow and I will fight. Amen. And so no matter what you're going through this morning, no matter what you are expecting to go through as you go to work today, as you go into your business place today, as you... You go online to do whatever you do online. Whatever it is that you are doing, just understand that no matter what, God will fight for you if you will trust him to do it. If you will trust him to do it. You're like a child at school. <laughs> Nakia right? F-L-O-W in capital. <laughs> as in the company no, no no you don't you don't have to go with that flow but you have to go with the flow of life go with the flow of god come on sometimes it seems like a pendulum swinging back and forth but pastor every time i look like i'm making progress this way i end up back this way god is teaching you how to balance when you are on a pendulum journey when the pendulum says this minute you're hired and the next minute you're fired, this minute you're hired and the next minute you're fired, God is teaching you how to balance on the pendulum. God is teaching you how to not get dizzy or busy. Come on. Hallelujah.
God is teaching us something in every situation or circumstance. God was teaching me over the last three days how to still persevere despite pain, how to still persevere when others would have said, you know what, I can't go because of this situation. It is easy to give up. It is not easy to press through. But God wants to raise up some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this season. God wants to raise up some Daniels in this season. God wants to raise up some Goliath, some Davids in this season that will face their Goliath and says, if I perish, I perish, but I will trust God. I will not be defeated. I will not turn back. My circumstances are difficult. My circumstances are debilitating. My circumstances are crushing. My circumstances seem bigger than me. They are above my pay grade. I cannot fight this fight but God says if you will trust me I'll fight it for you if you will trust me and just flow I will make you go I will make you grow I will make you know what you are to know so that you can be put on show without the fire without learning how to walk in the will and purpose of God we cannot be put on show for God and so I'm telling you this morning Embrace the difficulties, embrace the hard times, embrace the pain because Esther had to embrace it, Deborah had to embrace it, Ruth, Ruth had to embrace it. She had to leave the place where she knew that she was comfortable, that all her family and friends were, that's Ruth, because what God had for her was greater than the comfort that she had in the place where she had nothing from God. She could not find Boaz in Moab. But she had to commit to die to self. Come on, if anybody know that story, go, go find the story of Ruth and Naomi. They had to, she had to give up the place of her comfort and go through storms, difficulties. They were walking, they didn't have any donkey because they weren't rich. They had to walk back to Israel from Moab. A long treacherous journey but yet still Ruth says if I perish I perish but I will die where you die I will worship your God will be my God I will eat where you eat and drink what you drink I will honor you and walk with you no matter what the storm what the trial what the tribulation God requires that Ruth and Naomi type relationship with him from us as well he requires that we commit honoring him regardless of our situation or circumstance because the Boaz for her was a man the Boaz for some of you might be a man but the Boaz for some of us might be a car might be a ministry might be a house might be a financial breakthrough might be our debts being paid off might be a job whatever it might be Boaz takes different shape and form in the spirit realm than he did in the, in the natural in the Old Testament. Boaz in the Old Testament was just a man. Boaz in the New Testament is a spirit, a spirit of blessing, a spirit of favor. But we have to journey that long treacherous journey from Moab to Jerusalem. We have to walk that walk. We have to be committed to our Naomi, regardless of what happens. No matter what the situation, we have to covenant to eat only what Naomi eats, to drink only what Naomi gives us to drink. Come on, somebody. And Naomi represents Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Can we trust Jesus today? Can we trust Jesus in every way? Can we believe and act on what he say? that he can bring us to a brighter day. Our Boaz is just around the corner. But if we give up, if we faint, if we turn back like Naomi, like, like um, Naomi's other daughter-in-law, then we will never find our Boaz when we're supposed to. I hope this example is touching the hearts of God's people this morning. Because I sense that there are many persons who are discouraged. That's why the Lord has just had me just pressing in, pressing in on this. Persons are discouraged for different reasons. 
some are big discouraged some are small discouraged some are just downcast in their soul like david but god says to tell you this morning everything that you're going through as individual as it is towards you god says he's teaching you balance he's teaching you how to journey he's teaching you how to be faithful he's teaching you how to speak a peace be still he's teaching you how to war he's teaching you how to confess he's teaching you how to prophesy he's teaching you how to be your best in every test for he has already said and you must believe that he will not allow you to get to a place where you are defeated because he has made a way of escape and so no matter how many months your bills have not been paid no matter how much mortgage you owe or rent you owe God will never allow you to be evicted unless he's moving you out of the house where you live to a nicer place God will not allow you to be in derelict of duty unless he's, he has a different duty that you are so committed to this house where you live so committed to this job where you are so committed that you have let you you're not hearing God saying it's time for upgrade it's time for promotion it's time for a bigger house it's time for a bigger ministry you're so comfortable in the space and place where you are so that God will cause you not to be able to pay the mortgage so you have to move and you think God has let you down you think God has put you to shame but when he moves you out of that place when you become homeless when you become ministry less when you become uh, building less you'll recognize that someone call and says hey I hear that you're no longer in that building I have something for you uh, I close my time of encouragement to you by telling you there is a man that had a that has a, a, a nice business a, a, a business I won't go into too much about that business and he wanted to be a blessing to a woman of God but the woman of God was connected to a system connected to a process that that man felt was not in line with what he wanted to do so he wanted to be a blessing to the woman but because she was connected to a, a, a vine that that he didn't agree with he held on to his blessing but as soon as the woman came to a place where she heard God believed God responded to God and cut that the tie with that vine immediately hallelujah the blessing was hers I'm saying to you this morning, sometimes God wants to cut us from a vine so that the blessings can be thine. Hallelujah. So don't see separation. Don't see eviction. Don't see cut off from a relationship. Don't see uh, uh, dislodging from a job as necessarily a bad thing. Don't see it necessarily as why Satan strike again. Satan is victorious again. If we are truly children of God, Satan cannot have consistent victory over us. He had victory over, seeming victory over Job for a small period of time. And that was orchestrated and watched over by God. So Satan didn't have a victory. He just had moments. Amen. And when God had his fill, he cut it off immediately and restored Job to greater levels than he was before. I'm saying to you, if you will persevere with Jesus in this season, if you will believe God in this season, if you will trust God in this season, that your business will not be destroyed unless God has a bigger one for you. You will not be evicted from the house where you live unless God has a better one for you. You will not be given, uh, fired from your job unless God has a better one for you. But we must do what needs to be done. Because if we are in partnership, if we are in a, 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 a adulterous or fornicators relationship with Satan, then what we lose we will not be restored. What we lose will not be as a result of what God is trying to do, but what Satan has done. Amen. Hallelujah. So be encouraged, man. It is well. It is well, it is well. In the difficult times, we will give thanks because we know our God has already made it well. In the good times, we will give thanks even more because our God has made it well. In the valley of the shadow of death, we will hold out our arms so that the rod and staff can come under it. Persons will say, how come you're believing God to take you through this difficult time? Why don't you believe God to not go through the difficult time? 
The Bible says Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Therefore, we must suffer too, so that we too can become obedient to everything that God wants us to be obedient to. Amen. Praise God. So be encouraged, people of God. It is well. And I'm talking to myself too, guys. I'm not just giving you a message as a messenger and uh, because I am laying on um, waterbed or, or, or beautiful, um, posturpedic, uh, sophisticated mattress and all is well for me. All is not well for me. But I'm here to tell you that the same God that I am believing that will turn it around for me. It won't always be like this. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God will turn it around for me. It's already turned around for you. All we have to do is believe. Believe and receive. For God has already done it. All we have to do is run it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory to God. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, I, I, I promised yesterday that I would talk less today and dive into the word and, and, and the Lord. Oh uh, God, I was just about to open my mouth and apologize and says, you know what, guys, um, I promised that I would go into the word and the Holy Spirit just quickly in a sharp dot like a stick of a pin says, are you in control or am I? Are you in control or am I? Do not apologize for what I have done. I have blessed my people the way I want to. And so just relax. It is well. So I'm, I'm, I'm happily saying, praise God, God has done what he wanted to do. And I know that some people's lives have been impacted in a great way this morning, even if you don't say it. God has done it and he is perfect in all his ways. And what he does is well done. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm happy. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you know, I, I, I <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting um, how easily we get so into a flow that we are not um, being as, as, as helpful as we can to a lot of people. Do you know that over probably about 60 or 70 percent of the persons who are online now whether on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, or Arrow's internet radio, are persons who were told about the Fourth Watch family, the Fourth Watch devotion, and the Fourth Watch hour, and um, and, and and some of them got um, the, the the shared uh, message, and they watched it, and they said, "Wow, I want to be a part of this family." Almost all of you, if I were to ask, would be able to raise your hand and said, "I." was this message was sent to me by someone and i liked what i saw and i've been a member of this family ever since guys it's important that as part of your evangelistic duty if you truly believe that god is here that this is authentic that what god is using pastor marsh and i to do is something that the body of christ needs and is of value then you have to show that well you don't have to it's your free will but I would encourage you to show that commitment as part of your process by making sure that you, you share. Make that be one of the first things that you do as a good thing for the day, to share this message, especially today, as encouraging as I believe the Holy Spirit has been this morning, today. Just share with others. Share even if they don't care that you share. Share anyway, because sometimes someone can be going through a difficult time and they go back through their phone just looking just in tears checking and they come upon a message uh someone gave me a testimony the other day they said they were feeling sick really sick feeling depressed things were difficult at work they were going through some fight at work and they were just sitting in the couch feeling you know really like they're at their last their wits end and just scrolling through facebook and came upon one of our um, our devotional message our devotional time and and she said she just pressed on it by the leading of the holy spirit 
and it was a message that blessed her it's a message that delivered her from the spirit of oppression it was a thursday morning and it was a deliverance morning and she was delivered 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 and she said my god you are so strategic and so if she didn't have access if she did not have access to that message on facebook at that time god would have to find another way and yes he could i'm never gonna sit here and tell you that we as a family or i as a minister or pastor marsh and i are the only avenues that god have to be a blessing to other people no that would be erroneous it would be pride prideful and wrong amen but let it be that god says this is not what i'm using at this time i will use something else but let it not be that god wants to use this devotion family that we're a part of and it is not available for others to use because we didn't share we didn't evangelize amen hallelujah i know some of us are nervous because when we share persons will say why are you sharing that with me you're, you're bombarding my phone i am not a christian like that i don't want this i don't want that i don't even believe in what he believes in he's from a different church i am this and i am that and i am that and that's fine don't be disturbed by that don't be put off by that don't 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 be worried about someone being upset with you because you share the word of god one of the beatitudes he says uh, do not be disturbed. blessed are those that are reviled for my name's sake blessed are those that are cursed vexed with blocked or deleted for my name's sake so seek after those kinds of blessings even if persons get upset now if they tell you please do not send this to me again going forward fine obey what they have said but at least they will never be able to tell jesus on judgment day i never got any message nobody um, forward or shared anything about you to me i never saw anything not on whatsapp insta TikTok, or any of those things it never came to me and i know christian people laura britain henry is my cousin and i've never seen anything from her so how are you gonna hold me accountable for that and god is gonna hold laura accountable for having not shared amen so please share what you can not just this but anything else that will uplift that will solidify the name of jesus christ into the hearts of his people share 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 and watch god work amen because love is about caring and caring is about sharing hallelujah bless god okay hallelujah oh pastor marsha said only nine people share so far and it's that oh that was a long time ago all right hallelujah so we need for many people to share 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 sister denise you know lots of people all over the world share to people in africa share 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 hallelujah and that's one of the reasons why i try my best not to speak in tongues um too often in the in the in in, in the preparing of the word because i want this message to be shared to people who will not be put off by anything that they either don't believe in or don't understand amen we want to keep it clear and crisp and transparent okay so thank you so much for sharing today today is a good day this month seems to be a month where many people are born hallelujah and so sister k white one of our faithful and beloved women of god sister cheryl graham one of our beloved women of god is having a birthday today sister cheryl is having birthday and anniversary so it's happy birthday cheryl graham and anniversary and k white is happy birthday hallelujah k you're getting up there in age man 35 is a is a a, a, a nice age heading into maturity hallelujah 
Cheryl, I don't understand how at, 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 at 25 you um you're not only uh, having birthday but anniversary as well but god is faithful so happy birthday to you guys come on let's sing happy birthday for them for they're both on this morning so they will hear us and appreciate it amen happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to Kay and cheryl happy birthday and make us sing now happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to Kay and cheryl happy birthday birthday bless god hallelujah father we thank you for Kay and Cheryl today. We thank you for these two mighty women of God, these two sisters of the faith. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that they are blessed and highly favored. I speak health and strength, prosperity and good success to them as of today. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that whatever the enemy has caused to work against them, that today we pursue and overtake blessings and favor, goodness and mercy for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cut them loose from every umbilical cord of failure every umbilical cord of hurt and pain and disappointment and we release them to be a blessing wherever they go we release them to receive blessings from heaven that make rich and add no sorrow we release them oh god to have good and perfect will of you in them and through them according to your purpose in the name of the lord jesus christ health and strength prosperity and good success i declare decree prophesy and confess over these two mighty women of God now and always I pray that as a birthday gift oh God you will reconcile their families you will reconcile their their finances their health and everything that concerns them to according to your will like you did for Job when you reconciled him after his challenge I thank you father that it is well with these two mighty women of God in Jesus mighty name I pray amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah also i'd like to say happy belated birthday yesterday was shamoy spencer's birthday i don't think i remembered to mention it but shamoy we love you and we say happy birthday i bless you shamoy i bless the work of your hands i bless you with health and strength prosperity and good success and i confess that you shamoy spencer shall flourish shall prosper shall be in good health even as your soul prospers in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah. Happy anniversary to me. Yes, oh yes, Cheryl's anniversary as well. Happy anniversary to the Grahams. Happy anniversary. Oh, but didn't Larry Graham sing that song? Happy anniversary, if I remember clearly. Marlon, Marlon would know. Marlon is that Larry Graham, um, that song, Happy Anniversary. And good cheers. May each day be sunny and bright or something like that. It's been so long. I don't even remember the words of these songs anymore. Um, but um, praise God, we celebrate your anniversary. I bless you this day. I bless your husband. I bless your family. I declare that as you have persevered, hallelujah, Ray Goodman and Brown. All right, cool. Hallelujah. Um, I declare God's favor upon your marriage. May all the years that you have been through before and all the tears and the fears, hallelujah, disappear. And may the, your latter years in your marriage begin now. May the latter years of your marriage be the latter years of your family and the latter years of your prosperity and good success. As you have persevered with God and with man in this season, Cheryl, I declare that God will persevere with you and will bless you and bless you your family bless your marriage that you will prosper in these days in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you shall see the hand of God in these next three months before this year is out and God will show you that what you say out of your mouth you shall have begin to confess like you've never confessed before because God's about to show you that he's the best when you confess in Jesus name amen God bless you tell your husband hello for me and blessings to you and to your family in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name praise God all right that's our time for this morning thank you so much guys hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much thank you so much hallelujah Alicia Elliot I want to just bless you I want to just speak a word into your soul Alicia Elliot I want to just tell you 
that the enemy has a plan to try and disrupt you to try and discourage you but God says stay strong in him in this season stay strong in him in this time stay strong and focused on him as Peter looked into the eyes of Jesus and responded to the word come God says I will speak a word to you in this season Alicia Elliot I will speak a come word and as you step out as you step out to situations that I'm gonna be unveiling to you in this season as you step out in boldness as you step out in courage as you step out in trust and faith in me watch what I will do I will harden that which is soft under your feet I will shift the atmosphere and I will change your circumstances I will bring blessing out of what seemed like curse for you my daughter Alicia Elliot know that I will strengthen you in this season but there are times when you have said God I feel weak I feel like I can't make it I feel like I'm gonna fall I feel like I'm not gonna go through this 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 challenge in this time but God says each time you have said that I have brought you through and I want you to remember the many victories that I have given you in the seasons past and use that as a trampoline to get to the victories in the seasons to come God says be blessed my daughter for I have made a way where there seemed to be no way and you will see it and walk in it before this year is out with great testimonies of my goodness towards you says the Spirit of the Living God hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve hallelujah sister grace Sister Grace, Grace Dillon on Instagram. The Lord says, do not settle, do not settle for what he has blessed you with. For doors are opening for increase, for more blessings, for more blessings. God says, more buildings shall be yours. More buildings shall be yours. God says, be confident that I am opening opportunities. God says he's releasing additional buildings even in 2024 if you will believe him for it that you will have uh, an opportunity for for income hallelujah opportunities for income will come your way through to through real estate and so god says i am opening opportunities for real estate to you in this season in the name of jesus christ so watch out do not do not be complacent do not hold back and says I have what God was what I asked God for already uh, you have been faithful and trusting in praising God in giving and even things that you have asked God for that has not yet come to pass God has seen your faithfulness in persevering and God says I will bless you beyond what you have asked for I am opening doors and creating opportunities for you Grace Dillon that will cause men to say wow I want God to show up in my life like he has done for grace it is well woman of God watch the rest of this year and into 2024 God is gonna bless you like you are his only daughter so be prepared stand in faith because when God has promised you blessings Satan will try to come and steal it like he did for David and that nothing hallelujah must discourage you amen hallelujah stand fast God is your God hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus all right come on hallelujah today is deliverance Thursday and I'm prophesying like whoa <laughs> praise God hallelujah hallelujah father we thank you for today we thank you for this day this morning this afternoon this night whatever time zone your people are in i thank you that you have blessed them covered them guarded and kept them that you have encouraged our soul edified exalted and comforted us and that god today we are encouraged that we are ready to run and not be weary and to walk and not faint to tread upon serpents and scorpions and to stand in power above all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means hurt us thank you lord that you have done a marvelous thing for us and it is marvelous in our eyes as it is in yours in jesus name sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now that as we eat of your body and drink of your blood we do it in remembrance of you to the blessings of our body soul and spirit mind will and emotion in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen and so as the lord jesus christ took the bread he blessed it and broke it he gave it to the disciples and he said eat this is my body broken for you as often as you eat of it you do it in remembrance of me 
eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup. And he said, drink. This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. God has seen it. And God will repay your faithfulness. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will he give into your bosom in this season and the seasons to come. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. <coughs> In Jesus' mighty name. Excuse me. Amen. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus loves you and we love the whole owner too. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade and Rowan Wade saying, Stay in faith, man. Walk good and never let the devil discourage you or draw you back to a place that is your is your ex. If Satan tries to draw you back to your ex, just get vexed and just cut him off like an ex. Amen. Praise God. We are married to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And though difficult times will come, we're not divorcing him for anything. We're not going back to no ex. So ex can vex. Amen. Not even a text. <laughs> Praise God. Please go ahead and do something good for someone today. Hallelujah. Walk good and be blessed and only do what God has inspired you to do. Be a blessing wherever you go for is that what Jesus did. That's how we got saved. Someone went about doing good and encouraged us to come into the kingdom of God. And here we are enjoying the benefits and the fruits of it. Let someone else be that too. Share this broadcast with others so that they too can be blessed and go forth in God's glory. Amen. Love you guys. Have a safe day. Angels have already gone before you to make crooked places straight and rough roads smooth. So it is good. Enough love. Bless you. Anna. Bye. You.